Welcome to an example of integration using trig substitution. Before applying trig substitution, we should make sure that basic U substitution won't work. So looking at our integral, notice how it might be tempting to let U equal the radicand of X squared plus nine. But if we let U equal X squared plus nine, notice how differential U would be equal to two X DX, and this does not fit the form of our integral. So since basic U substitution won't work, we can try to apply trig substitution. Trig substitution takes advantage of these first two Pythagorean identities given here. Let's review how this works. If the integral involves the square root of a squared minus x squared, where a squared is a constant, we're going to let x equal a sine theta, and then simplify using this identity. If the integral involves the square root of a squared plus x squared, we'll let x equal a tangent theta, and then simplify using this identity. And then finally, for integrals involving the square root of x squared minus a squared, we'll let x equal a secant theta, and simplify using this identity. So going back to our integral, notice how we have the square root of x squared plus nine, which fits the form of the square root of a squared plus x squared, since addition is commutative, or if we want, we can change the order of addition. And because r a squared is equal to nine, a equals three, so we're gonna let x equal three tangent theta. Which means differential x, or dx, will equal three secant squared theta d theta. While we're here, let's draw a reference triangle for angle theta. If x equals three tangent theta, notice that tangent theta is equal to x divided by three. So if we sketch a right triangle, and this is angle theta, we can label the opposite side x and the adjacent side three, and therefore using the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse would be equal to the square root of x squared plus three squared, or x squared plus nine. Now let's perform our substitution. We'll have the integral of five times dx, which is three secant squared theta d theta, divided by x squared. Well, if x is three tangent theta, x squared is nine tangent squared theta. And then we'll have the square root of x squared plus nine which would be nine tangent squared theta plus nine, which we'll simplify to three secant theta, which we'll show. So let's begin to simplify. Notice here we have a common factor of three. It's one, three, and three, and three threes and nine. So we can factor out five thirds. We're left with the integral of secant squared theta d theta divided by tangent squared theta. And then to show how this is gonna simplify, let's write this as the square root of, we'll factor out nine, leaving us with the quantity tangent squared theta plus one. So we still have five thirds. We have the integral of secant squared theta, d theta, divided by tangent squared theta, now the square root of nine is equal to three, which is in the denominator, so this is really one third, so we'll factor out one third, and then tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta, and the square root of secant squared theta is one factor of secant theta. Notice in this form, one factor of secant theta simplifies out. And now we'll write the integrand in terms of sines and cosines. So we have five ninths times integral of, well secant theta is equal to one divided by cosine theta times, this is one over tangent squared theta, which is the same as one over sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta, which is equal to cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. 
And notice in this form, one factor of cosine theta simplifies out. So now we have five-ninths times integral of cosine theta over sine squared theta d theta. Let's finish this on the next slide. And now we'll perform u substitution. Notice if we let u equal sine theta, the denominator is now u squared, and differential u is equal to cosine theta d theta, which fits the integral perfectly. So in terms of u, we would have five-ninths times integral of one over u squared, or u to the negative two, and then cosine d theta is equal to du. So now we can integrate five-ninths, this would be times u to the negative two plus one, that's negative one, divided by negative one plus c. So this would give us negative five-ninths times u to the negative one is one over u plus c. Well, one over u is actually one over sine theta, which is equal to cosecant theta. So we have negative five-ninths cosecant theta plus c. So here's the antiderivative in terms of theta, but we want this in terms of x. This is why we wanted to sketch the reference triangle on the previous slide. Cosecant theta, using our reference triangle, would be equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse to the opposite side, which would be the square root of x squared plus nine divided by x. So we can write this as negative five times the square root of x squared plus nine divided by nine x plus c. Again, the square root of x squared plus nine divided by x is equal to cosecant theta. So this would be our antiderivative. I hope you found this explanation helpful.